everyone it's Karen here and welcome back to my channel I'm sorry I'm not showing my face today but truthfully I don't think you guys want to see me today the way I look so I just figured I would show you here what's going on here because I really wanted to make a video which I think is really important especially for people that want to try art journaling is art journaling like for beginners is how to choose an art journal I don't know why I haven't done this video before because truthfully it's overdue I am sure if I'm confused about what I like to use, then I am sure for somebody who's a beginner, they will not know what to do and how to use what to use for the product. So first I want to like, basically I'm going to move everything here from the table. I have 10 different tips and techniques or not sort of different things that we're going to look at. I mean, about our journals. And basically that may clarify what you should be looking for, how to, choose one for yourself and what's the best thing to do for yourself specifically so i have a few here but i'm actually going to move them and i'm going to go and show you one by one and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to categorize them depending on what i think is important now just so you know these i have a lot of journals because i love art journaling but this is not all that exists on the market and you can search by the categories that i'm giving you you can probably search for something that fits you I think the first one that I ever got is this moleskin journal and as you can see basically what I ended up doing I didn't use it for art journaling because the mixed media art journaling these pages were maybe a little bit too thin but I used it to just make notes about different things that I needed to do so that's one that you can use and I'll talk about it specifically afterwards then there is the same size journal this is the dilutions journal by diane reevely and this is a great journal i love it and i have one that is being uh, has been used oh sorry i can't open this because of this is around but i'll show you the one that i've already used and it has basically pages inside thick pages that you can use i also bought and this is one of my original ones this is a strathmore mixed media book and as you can see i've used i've used most of it i've done a lot of art journaling pages and all these art journaling pages whether it's the pages or the covers there's a video for them almost all of them there's a video for them on my youtube channel so you can just look and search for that if there's one specifically you can't find and you see something and i'm i'm kind of flipping through it and you want to know which one it is i will um i will direct you to that just leave a comment then we have stuff like this book it's also one of my original ones and it's basically more like a sketchbook so the pages are pretty thick but they're not like mixed media based but i still did some really nice stuff with paints and i like that as well i also practice my doodling and my face making in here so that's a good thing to have a sketchbook to do that as well i have this book which is my favorite this year one of my favorites it's the dina wakely media book and it has like different pages like canvas pages and very cool watercolor pages and burlap pages and she's just come out with another one with has jean like pages like you know like glue jeans so it's a very cool one i don't have that one yet i'm not sure if i'm going to get it or not because i have so many that i realize now another blue jean cover is this one this is a finnabar one and as you can see i did a beautiful cover here it's one of my favorites but then the journal is basically empty inside it has like really cool pages here or like also jean material ones and some canvas material ones and some watercolor but basically they are it's empty besides the cover which i don't know i guess i haven't gotten around to it then i have this other journal and this is i bought in one of my travels when i went to ecuador i just love this cover this cover is not mine but what i loved about this journal is that it had these really cool handmade papers so i just love this and um and i just did some really cool pages in it because it was so highly textured so it turned out really nice i really love the way that uh, they turned out and this is like a handmade journal so it's different than anything else i've ever had another finnabar a uh, journal is this one again this like uh, cover i did for uh the i think creativation last year 
and it has beautiful pages inside it's empty but there is beautiful pages inside so that's another one the other cool thing is like black journals they have lots of different sizes and i've done some really cool black pages and try different things but i haven't used it as much it's much harder to do things on black pages that you may think here is another one a canvas one and it has canvas pages inside so i did the cover but then i didn't do anything inside but there is some a bunch of canvas pages this is a prima finnebar one i'm running out of space here then i was so glad and gracious to get a handmade journal that my friend uh, asia made it is beautiful 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 there's a beautiful knot and it's just so nice she made this beautiful all handmade with leather and and i haven't used it so i'm ashamed to say sorry that i haven't used it yet but it is just stunning and i can't you know what i should maybe reach out for it and use it i just it's so precious to me that i don't want to even touch it um what else i have oh yeah i have this uh mixed media book this is also from finnabar um again I, I did the cover but didn't do many pages from here i did some but not many because this is what happens when you have so many journals you tend to kind of reach for other ones another handmade journal that my my friend tusha made uh this one is more like for like sketching because the pages are thin but it, look how beautiful this is i am just so grateful to have people that make things for me and i obviously make stuff for them and I'm just so grateful for this journey. And I want to be able to ease, you see, as you see, the pal is getting bigger and bigger and I'm still not done. So this is why this I made this video so you can actually understand what to look for in an art journal. The last ones that I want to show you are the Joggles Disc Bound Journals. And these are like the ones that focused the most in the past couple of years because they're just so easy to use. And it's a journal that is basically bound by discs and you can remove the pages really easily from it which you cannot do with the other ones so there's different sizes of that one as well here's another size like it's a it's kind of like an eight by ten but you can't really see because my pal is so big so now let's start i'm going to move everything out again because i want to talk about the different um things to kind of help you decide which one you want to buy so the first point i want to talk about is size and i find that this is really important because you need to find the right size of journal to use for yourself and it depends on how you like doing things if you like doing drawing or or if you like doing mixed media or if you like stamping depending on the size of your stamps depending on the size of your focal point you need to kind of figure out what kind of size you want to work with so you have things like this really big size, which is an 8 by 10, but there is different sizes. I think there's even a bigger one than this that I don't have. And then you have things like 6 by 6. You have, a, I think it's, this is a 7 by 9 inches. And then you have little ones as well. This is like from Joggles. The disc bound journals come in the most amount of sizes. So you have like size, like a size like this and a size like this, then 8 by 10 and so many different sizes. So that's one of the things I love about them. But I've worked a lot with this Dilutions journal and I'll show you soon about it in a different um, category. But this size is really good as well. This is a really, really good size. I love the square sizes as well. And I love the long ones. So there is different sizes that... Uh, there's different sizes that you can do and that leads me to my second points with this shape so not only do you need to figure out what size you want but also what shape you want and that depends on what kind of things you have so for example I mean this is a journal that you basically use vertically but then you have this one that is horizontally and you could move things I mean you can shift things around another type of shape is there's like for example the joggles ones they made a heart out of it there's also um, tag journals. So, for example, I made this little thing, which is like has tags and it they come blank. Right. And I just use them. There is the square size, right? Like the bigger square size, which is this one. And even bigger than that, I have this joggles one as well. And inside, look at all the sizes that it has. So you can have different sizes incorporated into this one as well. 
or just have a journal just of these little three by fours or four by fours sorry so there is eight by tens there's this shape and this shape and they're all pages that you can work on so there's big there's circular ship half moons and like so many different shapes. so i really love this joggle one just because it has so many different shapes that you can incorporate or you can use separately there's this one that is like a circle and there's the tags again let's see what other ones more tags another tag so i just think it's really important to think of what kind of things to incorporate and if i haven't said this before i'm linking every single one of these below whatever is available some of my of them might not be available already and then you can choose the one that you want besides size and shape another thing that you should want to consider is color so for example most of the journals have white or cream colored pages but then you have like things that have black pages so if you want to test something like that i mean again i haven't used this one as much joggles also makes uh this black a black disc bound journal and you can also have pages that are like craft color like this so here we go like these ones you see they could go craft color pages um this one i think might have that as well the dina wakely one let me see um hold on let me just look for one. Oh, there we go you see it has like craft color paper and white and then like other other colors from the fabrics so that's really important to think about as well if you want the white one is the easiest one i find a white or like a creamy color depending on the paper so i find those to be the easiest ones to use but i mean that's preference right so that's important to know the fourth thing that is important to kind of check is um, texture of the pages so that's really important so for example you can have things like thick uh, watercolor paper that it has both this i'll show you sorry this one i can't i'm trying to find two sides one has a texture side and one is smooth you can have uh, things like you know like a canvas and you can have burlap you can have like i showed you the craft paper so there's different types of textured pages that you can have so my recommendation is to start with the smooth ones things like watercolor paper so for example things like in this book they are smooth this is like the what i said the cream color i mean it, it looks white in the picture but it's cream colored and here is another style i showed you before that is textured because it's handmade so that's important to choose another style that is really cool these joggles disc bound journals there's one that comes with upo paper so it's really great because you can use it with alcohol inks so i mean there's so many different textures that you can use as well so that's another really great thing to think about when you want to choose a, a, an art journal the next thing that you should really really consider is the thickness of the pages so for example, in my moleskin, the reason why I didn't end up using it is because when I tried adding some media to it, it was so thin that it actually bled through and the pages warped too much and I didn't like that. It's best to have a very thick page. So for example, the Joggles disc bound journals, they have 140 pound watercolor paper. This is from Strathmore that she uses to, uh, that the owner uses to put into the pages then even this one that is a handmade one it's pretty thick and it absorbs a lot of the media which is really good same with the dilutions journals and the, the dina wakely ones they're pretty thick i mean they take a lot of media which is really good and the same thing with all the different finnabar ones that i showed you the media book is pretty thick as well so the thicker the pages the better so you want to make sure that they're thick enough so i'm telling you here which one is thick the media book the dina wakely all any dina wakely sorry any dina wakely any diane reevely's any finna bear products any joggles products they're all very very thick anything that says media book a mixed media book you are good to go and you want to have things that are you know 140 and up in terms of pounds of the paper 
if it's watercolor paper you want it to be thicker so i mean there's things to consider in terms of that in the thickness of the paper that leads me also to the quality of the papers which is the next point that i want to talk about and the quality is really really important you don't want a book that has not only thin pages but also the quality of the pages are really really not good so far i haven't encountered too many mixed media books for art journaling that the pages are not really really great obviously fabric pages are going to be thicker and take more but they're because they're highly textured it's harder to use them but basically any book that I've encountered, no matter what, the quality has been amazing and also the thickness of it. So, so far, everything that I'm listing here has great quality, has great thickness, and then you just have to focus on size and color and shape and things like that. And once you buy one, you can, like you see here, I'm buying other ones. Some that have been given to me, like the Joggles and the Finnabar ones, but a lot of them I've bought myself. And once you buy one and then you start playing with it, you kind of get a feel for them and then you know what to do. So then you can go and buy other mixed media journals or other covers or other, or other books that you want to buy and you start playing with other sizes and shapes and colors. The other really important thing to think about, and this is, I think, probably the most important out of all. And this is what you should really think about when you're really wanting to buy this journal is the binding. I can't tell you how important the binding is. And why I say it is because I've struggled with this so much. So you have things like spiral binding, which you see over here. You have the disc bound journals and then you have the sewn in binding. You can also have like my the handmade one. You can also have like sewn in binding like this, but it's a little bit different and much easier to use because you can pull the pages out. And you can also have these tied in like the way these are handmade. You can also have thick ones with rings like this, and that's really good because you can add more pages to it. And this one I think is also sewn in. This one over here, let me just open it. You see it's kind of the pages are sewn in here. Now, why is this so important? Binding is so important because the following reasons. If you're like me, that you're making pages that are more 3D. So for example, if you can see here, these are kind of 3D. They're like, they stick out of the page. They're very thick. Same with this ones. They're very, very thick. So if you're like me, that makes very highly textured pages and very thick ones, what will happen is that if the binding is so small, it will not fit. And why I want to show you what happened to my journal. This is one of the journals. This is the original one that I started with. Now, if you know Diane Reevely, she does 2D journals. So basically all her pages are flat and that's great. This is why her journals work so well. So when this was the only one that was kind of available and I bought it, I loved it because the pages were so thick and so forth. But look what happened after a while. So this was over here. And after making so many pages, I could not close the book. So what happens is that if my pages are very, very thick, they it become it becomes an accordion book, basically. So what somebody suggested is to basically cut out a piece of the journal, which is this one, believe it or not, was inside here. And that way you have two journals and you can create your own cover, which I haven't done, but I should. Now you can create your own cover using an old book cover. So for example, this is an old book cover and I've taught a class about this. I took a book and I took away the insides and then basically, which I don't know why I should have, I should have done this before, you could do this. I mean, this is still too thick and I just did the cover for this. Now for this book, you can create your own art journal and put pages in it. The same way that my friend Asia did and she just went and put different uh, pages in it. But this is just a cheap way of creating a cover for something, but that has nothing to do with what I'm talking about right now. So what I found really helpful is the way that things are bound so for example like things like rings you can actually open them up and remove the the pages so when i worked on this 
cover i removed it so that would be easier for me to have it flat same thing with these pages i could remove them it, it's a little bit of a pain to remove them but it's worth it because that way you can work on the page flat and that's what leads me to the thought about binding and how important it is because even with this one with the one that is that is sewn it gives in there's not enough space for it anymore and i can't i mean even though i'll work on some other pages they will not hold as much this is why i prefer in this case regarding binding to use the disc bound journals and that's because that way i can actually put as many pages as i want in here and once it's full i can just move to the next book and not have to make it look like an accordion so I have many different books that are like this. The only thing is that this is the only book that actually doesn't have a cover. So if you love making really cool covers for your art journals or you want to do have really cool covers, you can turn one of these pages into a cover. But the binding in this one is my favorite one. I just want to show you another one of my books and why I'm talking about binding, okay? This is a mixed media book and you can see by this that the binding is very very small i wish they made the binding bigger so as i started filling this book you see like i have lots of pages in this book i'm stuck with all these different amount of pages that i can't work in because you know what it's become too thick and i if i make it even more thicker it will eventually just become super super large and it will not fit in the book so that's a really important thing and then it would be cool if they made also a, another type of journal with actual pages this is a great way to keep a journal to have the rings because then you can put things in it and it's just add more pages and more pages so i mean there's so many different ways to bind things but i just found that the disc bound journals or things like rings or even the spiral bound journals are a little bit easier to work unless you're doing 2d effects so if you're just doing drawing or spraying and you're using any 3d mediums like modeling paste or gesso or um, texture paste if you're not using any of those then you're fine because it will not get as thick so it will look really good when you use it and that leads me the binding leads me to another point and that is about the amount of pages that each journal has you think that having a lot of pages is great it is only great if you're doing a 2d uh, pages like i said before so this one has a lot of pages but you're able to fill it if you're just doing like painting or drawing without a 3d effect on it but what happens when you do want a 3d effect then this is why i love having not as many pages it does have enough but not as many pages and that way you know that you've used all of it yes yeah, so it has less pages but also um, you can fill them and then you can fill more and it's inexpensive as well so i mean it's looking about looking at what you prefer in that sense so having a lot of pages is not always the greatest thing although it's good for your money but at the end of it you end up not using all the pages in the book and you feel like you've wasted them so you could like i said in this book you can take the pages out right so it's much easier to work flat that's another actually another point uh, you can take out the pages to work flat on um with the spiral ones as well but you cannot take the pages out of these ones these are basically inside and they're sewn in so you can if you rip the page it could rip the binding um however as i said i was able to remove piece of it because they bind them in sections so if you remove a section of it then that's okay and then you can as i said create your own thing the other thing about binding sorry i should have said is that in books like this because you cannot work a flat surface you need to make sure that you cover this with some tape to make sure that the liquid that you if you're using any mediums like paints or sprays that have a very liquidy they can go through the binding so you have to be very careful with most of the ones that have bindings if you're working with something like the joggles ones where you can take the page out you don't have to worry about that because you're working flat same with these ones if you're taking the d-rings out or even if you're taking the ones from the from the rings the spiral bound ones you can remove the pages and work flat and then move put them back in 
So in that sense, it's really important to think about that and to think of, to know how many pages, as I said, to have, because that's important as well. And like I said, you can rip these pages out to remove the amount of pages that you have in here, but it's the same thing that you just wasted a bunch of pages. You could use them, let's say, for mono printing with a gel plate or something like that, and then include pieces of it in another journal. But it's the same thing as buying a journal that has less pages because eventually you're going to have to remove things out of it. So, I mean, there's a give and take and with everything. Everything has its pros and cons, and I do... Um, suggests for you to make a list of what you want to have in your journal because that's really important what's important to you and what it's not the next thing that is important is whether or not something is handmade or it's bought in the store why I say that is because something that's handmade it has so much sentimental value especially to me if it was gifted to me or even if you're making your own you could take an old bound book and use the pages as a journal. So there's so many ways to create something that is very inexpensive just by using like, you know, like leather from a store and some watercolor paper instead of buying an expensive journal. You could use recycled materials. You can, you, you can make a junk journal, which has a lot of different materials that you collect. You can make uh, a journal, as I said, out of a thick book an old book and that the only tip that I give you with that one is that in order to create a page you have to glue a few pages together because the pages of a book are really thin so if you glue a few pages together with some gel medium you would be able to create a handmade book and that leads me to my final point which is probably what most people are waiting to hear is about pricing and that's where I think that will go either in the pro or con depending on your journal so obviously handmade journals like this one or the one that you can create by using an old cover any of these are obviously the cheapest ones that you can use because they're basically handmade but in terms of quality you don't always know what you're going to get so for example this one i'm sure it's amazing quality she put a bunch of pages that are really thick so that's really good but then we get into other pricings and I can't get into sing into every single one because obviously that's going to take too long but what you can do is you can compare price by the links that I have below so if you want to choose a certain book obviously the bigger books are going to be more expensive if they have more media in it they're going to be more expensive the joggles journals i find a little bit cheaper and they always have sales so that's great the media book is great i don't um because uh, the price is reasonable but at the same time it has a lot of pages and they're bound so you can remove that so there's a lot of books so for example this one maybe is not as expensive but it doesn't have as many pages so i don't know it's not a um, it's not as great so in the quantity of pages this should take it be taken into consideration that there's only like kind of four pages in here who wants to have a book with only four pages so it's give and take and little books like these are going to be much cheaper so depending on the size depending on the on the quality of the book you're going to find different categories and different pricings and i encourage you to look at the links below and compare the prices and then find something that is perfect for you so I really hope you enjoyed my extensive look at our journals. I am sure there's many others on the market. And basically, I hope you find the right one. And if you have any questions, please feel free to ask me in the comments or message me directly on Facebook, on Instagram. If you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you would love to share it, I would love for you to share it. That I really appreciate. Thank you so much, everyone. And have an amazing day. Bye.